I had a chance to talk recently with one of the leading quilters in the world. Let's take a look. Welcome, Harry. I am so excited to see what you brought today because it really is a surprise. We haven't gone through this, so and I know that you always are so inventive. Well, thank you. So leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. All right, let's get. Let's just get Actually, into it. Actually, today what I'm going to do is share with you some of the uh, techniques that I like to use in my stenciling. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, and I, I like to stencil on fabric with fabric paint. Oh, I and love the stuff you've done. So some some of it's freer than that? others. Some of it's more more structured than mm -hmm. others. Okay. Okay. Um, first, I'd like to um, show you the more structured technique that I use. We're going to um, do this little tree today because I think it's real simple and mm -hmm. you'll be able to follow. It's cute. Oh, so it's an old little tree, but it's it's my old tree. Uh, I use freezer paper a lot for my stencil uh -huh. because mm -hmm. it's so easy to iron on fabric and it has good adhesion. Mm -hmm. And you can reuse the stencil several times, actually, if you're careful when you pull them off. Okay. So uh, after I lay it on, and I like to trace it on, even with tracing, I like to use the water-soluble uh, pens for tracing because then if any ink would accidentally get on your fabric, you wouldn't have to worry about yep. whether or not it would come off. Oh, that's a good tip. You yes. Know, so I like to do that. Okay. Then after I've traced my design, then... I cut it. Um, I cut the design out with a craft knife. Oh, okay. Because you have good control. Number one, with a well, with you a, have good control. It, I'd have to practice a little bit. On that. <laughs> well, then practice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if I just after I do it, it actually gives you two images. It gives you a positive and a negative. Okay. So you if know. you're real careful, you can get both. That's right. Okay. And, you know, if you're not, if you do make a mistake, you can always take a piece of tape. Oh, well, of course. And, yeah, <laughs> and tape it. <laughs> <That's right>. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can just tape it. So then what I like to do is take it, uh, put it on another uh, piece of fabric. Mm -hmm. I just um, lay the tr little tree here on a piece of fabric. Take it to the ironing board. Okay. And just iron it. Doesn't take a doesn't take an awful lot of just heat. Just a little, to, okay. It just, steam it, or no? Does it matter? I w I don't use steam. Okay. I, I don't think it makes a difference. And right, you make sure mm -hmm. the shiny side is down. Very thanks. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. That's. Hate I've to, tried that. Before. I'd hate to have all those people write into you and with <laughs> freezer paper stuck to the bottom of their iron. That's right. <laughs> okay. So after it's adhered to the uh, fabric, then I like to use uh, fabric paint. Okay. Now, a lot of these brands you can get at your local craft stores. You know, just mm -hmm. read. Most of them are for fabric. For fabric. Okay. Uh, some of them uh, tell you to wait 24 hours to be permanent. Are and they then, oil or acrylic or? I think they're more acrylic based because okay. I wash I wash the brushes out with water, mm -hmm. and because of okay. that, they often uh, get a little skin on the top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in order to take that skin off, now I've already taken the skin off because I didn't want to make a mess and. In the on studio. the set, okay. Yes. <laughs> but I just cut around and then lift the skin then off. Lift, okay. Okay. Um, that would worry thing. me, see, if I opened that up. Well, it so. would, and it, because yeah. they appear to have been dried out, mm -hmm. and they're really not. Okay. Okay. All right. And then the same thing with the uh, stencil brushes. Now, stencil brushes are stiff, mm -hmm. and they have a, you know, they've been cut flat so that you can, uh, and I just kind of work it in here. Now, another thing that I do. I always like to have make sure that I have paper towels around for accidents because mm -hmm. I'm good at accidents. But even more than that, if I have a piece of the fabric that I'm that I'm going to use, a scrap, a, scra okay. a scrap piece, so that I can just uh, practice a little bit, practice a little bit, make sure that my brush is running right and that mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. it's not a mess. And then basically, oh. it's this is just a, a a very simple technique. Then it allows you. Um, to be able to do some really pretty quilting within and without, you know. Kind of a, so, kind of a fake applique look then, isn't it? Uh, that's what I call it. That's fake what you applique. call it. Okay. <laughs> or is just, the word faux applique? Yes. No. No, it's, it's fake. fake. <laughs> it's fake applique. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, it's probably faux somewhere. <laughs> somewhere in the planet. Uh, 
but you know my um, there so you can add a lot more colors mm -hmm. you know for mm -hmm. the sake of time I'm not shading gonna, and things like that you can do do a lot of shading mm -hmm. uh, I have uh, some uh, this one over here is the um, the reverse of that is, one this is the negative of this one okay and I'm gonna let you do the honors you can just go ahead and peel that paper off I love peeling paper off. <laughs> That's why I gave you the job, and you're probably I darn good at I it too, to aren't you? It. I do. And I'll save this. I'll be very careful because you said you could reuse you it. You can reuse it. Yes, yes. Oh, that is the funnest part. Look at that. <gasps> That's beautiful. And you have done some other shading yes, in there. Yes, I did. With that purple. I added, very some, pretty. I added some of the good purple. Good job, in there. Harry. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Got lucky again, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, and so you can uh, oh, you can cute. add colors. You know, certainly you can do these blocks at a time, then mm -hmm. put your blocks together. Mm -hmm. But it also gives you a good guide when you go to your long arm when you have your quilt top put together. Mm -hmm. You know, it gives you a good guide for for your quilting yes, too. You know, yes. you can still quilt within the leaves, veins, and whatever. Oh, or of course, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just quilt clouds quilt, quilt. <laughs> <laughs> just have a good time and now here's another one now this isn't um, I, I haven't added a second color to it but uh, one more time I would just be thrilled if you would do the honors oh I would love to <laughs> <laughs> let's see how this one now this one's gonna be oh look at that yes 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 I know everybody out there is wishing they were me right now being able to pull off the paper Kind of like when you have a sunburn, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so then you uh, have the oh, image of the. That's lovely. You have the image of a tree with. And a, then you could trapunto it if you wanted to. Oh yes, yes. you could. Yeah. You could trapunto it. And of course it. I would. Of you know. course. Yes. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, and you can put a lot of details in there, little knots in the trees or whatever. You know, you, mm -hmm. you, you can mm -hmm. take very simple motifs and do this. And make them And make them very, wonderful. very special. Yeah. I do usually let these things sit around for a couple of days, and then I you do iron them. You set them? Okay. Then I iron them. Mm -hmm. uh, most, most of all these little brands hold up very well, because I have thrown them in the washer then also to make, still, sure, okay. to make sure that they're really set before I make a big quilt. Now I'm going to lay these out here so all your friends can see them. Now I'm going to have to go back and find a, find a little bit of paint. This is beautiful. Yeah. Just gorgeous. Thank you. That little topiary theme I thought really mm -hmm. uh, fit well into, I guess, maybe my mood for the day or whatever. You know, yeah, it I just, like the way you've got flowers behind flowers. and um, It's just beautiful. That's the way they came. The flowers came behind the flowers. Well. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, we'll see what, I oh, will use the same color, then I don't have to get a clean brush out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, how are you going to do it without making a mess on the flowers? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Th that's what, that's where oh. I use some of this quilter's template plastic. Okay. You Just know, to... and I cut it in a lot of random shapes. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. A lot of different, uh, I, I pick some of the shapes that are in here. I cut these these different shapes. Um, actually, you can see this one here is the, the squirrel shape. Mm -hmm. from the, mm -hmm. But that, that's a little more detail than I usually cut. I, I pick these random shapes. And I, one another thing that I do is when I do cut these, and I usually cut these with a pair of scissors, mm -hmm. and none of them have to be exact or anything, but I do write the word top. So you don't get paint. So I don't turn them all upside uh -huh. down mm -hmm. when I'm stenciling. Now some of them have sharper turns than others. Some of them have uh, softer arcs, mm -hmm. you know, uh, bigger arcs. So just different shapes, so you can... They're just... And I, I see. And I just put several of them out. Okay, so show time. me how you're going to do this. And I'm going to load up my brush and, like I said, it's <laughs> the same fabric, right? Okay. <laughs> Use your imagination, folks. No. <laughs> We're going to do this. Now I'm just going to take something like, I'll take this leaf here. And what I do... Just sort of match I'm the using, shape. Yeah, and I'm kind of using this mm -hmm. as, a, as a block. So you, you kind know. of get paint on top of it and then come out. Yeah, oh, I but, I, but uh -huh. I move it as I'm going along. Oh, okay. You see, if I, uh, I just can, I just but I just want to make sure that the area that I'm protecting 
Mm -hmm. I just keep protecting it, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, you can, of course, keep adding a lot of colors. Now I've, you know. Oh, how fun. You know, you just keep brushing this in here, but as you get these away, and, and I'll come back in here with other colors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to, get, to get a sense of what you want, you might want to just go rough around it first, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and then pick up. Then get closer. Then, then get closer, then pick up some of your, some of the stencils that, uh, that fit and you can put more detail in there. This is so neat. I can even go back on quilts that I already have done and add this yep. stenciling technique. What yes, a you can. fun idea. You absolutely oh, can. And I've, and done, I've done lullaby, so I can, I can have you one can just like that. <laughs> I bet you, you can have a better one. I know. <laughs> I was trying to get that one done for you. <laughs> no. Oh. Um, fabric stencil paints can, are, um, they're very compatible, and you can, like, I would probably not make this whole quilt a pink mm -hmm. quilt. Right. You know. The people who have done toll painting and other kind of painting are, are, you know, will even have a more of an advantage, probably, but I think I can learn this, too. Well, so, I think so. Yeah. I think so. so, with some coaching and a lot of hard work and years of practice. <laughs> No, I think well, you could do you. it very quick. It I looks think, really you fun. Know, your, um, your quilts are so beautiful, I can't imagine that this, they need something like this. Well, this, this, i got to do this on some. And this, so. is, this is fun for me. This is an extension of, yeah. uh, of the shapes and the mm -hmm, colors. And mm -hmm. sure. Well, thank you so much again for showing us some new techniques and some fun things to do on quilts. We appreciate it well, so much. Well, I know that all of you quilters will take this and run with it. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs>